Hello dear students, in this session we discuss about hardness of the water sample, why water becomes hard, what are all the problems we face out of using hard water and how to find out the hardness of the water sample, how to det determine the level of hardness of any given water sample and how to remove the hardness. All these things we try to understand in this particular session. All of you know that water is called as hard water or soft water. Whenever any water sample contains salts of calcium and magnesium like chlorides, sulphates and bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium, whenever these salts are present in water beyond certain limit, then we call that water as hard water. If the salts of calcium and magnesium, chloride, sulphates and bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium together, if they are present beyond 300 ppm of calcium carbonate in any given sample of water, then that water we call it as hard water in nature and that water will not be suitable for washing purpose, washing cloths and that water is also not suitable to be used in industrial boilers, etc. So, therefore, whenever salts of calcium and magnesium, chlorides, sulphates and bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium are present in the given water sample beyond certain limit, then that water becomes hard water in nature, that water becomes hard in nature. And whenever the water becomes hard in nature, one of the major problems we face with hard water is that water does not suitable for washing cloths, washing purpose because hard water does not produce lather readily with the soap. Whenever the water is not able to produce lather with the soap, lather with the washing soap, that kind of the water we cannot use it for washing purpose effectively. Why the hard water is not able to produce lather with the soap? The reason is whenever the hard water is used for washing purpose, washing purpose, when it comes in contact with the soap, so the calcium and magnesium ions present in the hard water, what they do is they react with soap molecules. This soap molecules that is sodium stearate, the calcium and magnesium ions react with soap molecules that is sodium stearate forming calcium salt of sodium stearate and calcium, calcium stearate and magnesium stearate. These two salts are insoluble in nature, thereby the soap molecules are bound, thereby soap molecules are not freely available for forming the lather, thereby they will not be able to carry out the washing of the cloths effectively. That is the reason hard water is not suitable for washing purpose and the, the, uh, this is because mainly hard water is not able to form lather with the soap. This is the, the, that is because the calcium and magnesium ions which are present in the hard water interact with the soap molecules forming calcium and magnesium salts of the soap which are insoluble in nature. Because of this reason hard water is not suitable for washing purpose. So, therefore, one of the major problems we face with hard water, one of the major problems we face with the hard water whenever the hardness is beyond the permitted limit that is 300 ppm of calcium carbonate is this we cannot use this hard water for washing purpose effectively. This is one of the major problems. Another major problem we face with hard water is hard water cannot be used in industrial boilers. As all of you know industrial boilers we use in order to convert water into steam because steam holds huge quantity of heat energy and that heat energy is used for various purposes particularly nuclear power plants and uh, thermal power plants etc. where we use this uh, water conversion into steam for the purpose of uh, electricity generation. In that in those case of the boilers in those in those kinds of the boilers we cannot use hard water because whenever we use hard water in industrial boilers where we convert water into steam what happens is upon converting water into steam, upon heating, upon boiling water, water only boils off converting itself into steam, but these salts, calcium and magnesium salts which are there in water, they do not get evaporated, thereby they get settled inside the boiler only and gradually they get deposited inside the, at the inner surface of the boiler forming hard scaling. Thereby what happens? The heating efficiency or the working efficiency of the boiler 
comes down, there is going to be a huge loss of energy whenever the entire inner surface of the boiler is uh, formed with the scaling due to the presence of this uh, calcium and magnesium salts. This is one more major problem we face with the hard water. Therefore, whenever the water becomes hard, there are two problems we face. One is hard water is not suitable for washing purpose because it cannot form lather with the soap easily. Another problem is we cannot use hard water in industrial boilers because it leads to the uh, reduction in the heating efficiency of the boiler. So therefore, what we try to understand as of now is what are all the salts which are responsible for hardness of water? The chlorides, sulphates and bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium are responsible for the hardness of water. Whenever the water becomes hard, what are all the problems we face? One is it we face problem in washing purpose where the hard water is not suitable for washing purpose. Another is hard water we cannot use in industrial boilers or any such kind of the boilers or utensils we cannot use hard water. These are the two major problems we face with hard water. Then when it comes to hardness of the water, there are two types of hardnesses. One is temporary hardness, another one is permanent hardness. That or other way around, we can classify water itself as hard water itself as permanently hard water, temporary hard water. That also that way also we can classify. Otherwise, hardness is being classified as temporary hardness and permanent hardness. Whenever the hardness is due to whenever the hardness of the water is due to bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium, that kind of the hardness is what we call as temporary hardness. Why we call this as temporary hardness? I repeat once again, whenever the hardness of the water sample is due to the presence of bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium, that kind of hardness is what we call as temporary hardness. Why we call it as temporary hardness? The reason is whenever any water sample contains only bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium, we rem uh, thereby the water is hard in nature. That kind of the hardness can be very much easily removed by a simple physical process like boiling. Upon boiling the water sample for 30 minutes, what happens is these bicarbonates and of calcium and magnesium will get decomposed, thereby we can remove them easily. That is the reason this kind of the hardness is what is called as temporary hardness. Upon boiling the temporary hard water for 30 minutes, the calcium bicarbonates present there, they undergo decomposition forming uh, insoluble precipitate of calcium carbonate along with the formation of H2O and CO2 and magnesium bicarbonate decomposes forming magnesium hydroxide and along with the formation of CO2. This calcium carbonate and magnesium hydroxide being precipitates in nature, they can be easily removed by filtration, thereby we can get rid of bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium, thereby we can get rid of hardness caused by these two salts of calcium and magnesium very much easily just by boiling the hard water for 30 minutes. That is the reason this kind of hardness is what is called as temporary hardness. Therefore, temporary hardness is the hardness caused by bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium or other way around whenever bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium are causing the hardness of the water, that kind of hardness is what is called as temporary hardness. Why it is called as temporary hardness? Because this kind of the hardness can be removed very much easily just by a simple physical process like boiling the water for 30 minutes. By boiling the water for 30 minutes, we can remove these bicarbonates of calcium magnesium, thereby we can remove the hardness, that is why it is called as temporary hardness. Whereas other kind of the hardness is what is called as permanent hardness. Whenever the hardness is caused by chlorides and sulphates of calcium and magnesium, that is calcium chloride, magnesium chloride, calcium sulphate and magnesium sulphate. So, if these salts are present in water, then that kind of the hardness is what is called as permanent hardness. That means, if the hardness of any water sample is caused by chlorides and sulphates of calcium and magnesium, then that kind of the hardness is what is called as permanent hardness. The reason is these salts, chlorides of calcium and magnesium, sulphates of calcium and magnesium, these salts cannot be removed from water 
by any physical process by any simple physical process we have to go for certain particular chemical methods only that is the reason this kind of hardness is what is called as permanent hardness and permanent hardness is caused by what chlorides and sulphates of calcium and magnesium. So, therefore, whenever any water sample contains chlorides and sulphates of calcium and magnesium, we remove those compounds, thereby we remove permanent hardness by using certain chemical methods like ion exchange method, zeolite method, etc. So, therefore, uh, whenever chlorides and sulphates of calcium magnesium present in water, we call it as permanent hardness, they, those can be removed only by certain chemical methods like ion exchange method or zeolite method. In this way, there are two kinds of hardnesses, permanent hardness and temporary hardness. Temporary hardness is caused by bicarbonates of calcium magnesium, permanent hardness is caused by chlorides and sulphates of calcium and magnesium. Both permanent hardness and temporary hardness together, we call it as, we call it as total hardness of the given water sample. Therefore, total hardness of any given water sample is nothing but sum of the hardnesses caused by bicarbonates, chlorides and sulphates of calcium and magnesium. Cleared? No. That is what we call as total hardness. And the hardness caused only by bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium is called as temporary hardness. And the hardness which is caused by chlorides and sulphates of calcium and magnesium together is what we call as permanent hardness. Permanent hardness and temporary hardness together we call it as total hardness of the water sample. Now we will see how to find out the hardness of water uh, of any hardness of any given water sample. And in order to find out the extent of hardness of any water sample we use the we use EDTA therefore we call it as EDTA method. What is the principle behind this experiment? See here, uh, as already we have understood, the metal ions which are responsible for hardness of the water sample is calcium and magnesium. And how many calcium and magnesium ions are present in the given water sample of 1 liter or whatever it is or, or 10 to the power of 6 cm cube. So, how much of the uh, calcium and magnesium ions are present in a water sample that will give us an idea about the hardness of the water sample. If any water sample contains more of these calcium and magnesium ions, then the, the hardness of that water sample is more. If any other water sample contains less amount of calcium and magnesium ions, then we say the hardness of the water sample is less. So, we find out the amount of calcium and magnesium present in the given water sample by complexometric titration, by complexometric titration. To carry out the complexometric, complexometric titration, we use standard solution of disodium salt of EDTA. We use complex sol standard solution of disodium salt of EDTA. And this disodium salt of EDTA, this or EDTA in general is a hexadentate ligand. You know what is a ligand? A ligand is a compound, it is generally a uh, elect, uh, which is a ligand is a compound which can donate one or more pairs of electrons to the central metal ion. By donating one or more pairs of electrons to the central metal ion, it forms coordination bond or complex bond between itself and the central metal ion. That is what we call as a ligand. And in that way, disodium salt of EDTA is a exodentate ligand and each molecule of EDTA reacts with one calcium or magnesium ion present in the hard water forming metal EDTA complex. That means what? Imagine you have certain amount of hard water with you, suppose 25 ml of hard water in a conical flask, 25 ml of hard water contains certain number of calcium and magnesium ions and when you add EDTA, disodium salt of EDTA solution into the conical flask containing hard water, so naturally the metal ions present in the hard water react with EDTA react with EDTA forming EDTA metal ion, EDTA metal ion complex because EDTA is a ligand and hard water contains metal ions. Therefore, any ligand when, when it comes in contact with the suitable metal ions, they form a complex. In this way, whenever hard water containing metal ions is treated with EDTA, EDTA reacts with the metal ions forming metal EDTA complex, thereby it helps us to find out the hardness of the water. Therefore, we call it as complexometric titration. So, we find out the end point, 
by carrying out this type by carrying out this titration of hard water versus edta and during this titration the complex is being formed between the metal and the edta therefore we call it as complexometric titration so therefore basic principle is metal ions calcium and magnesium ions which are responsible for the hardness they will be estimated how much of metal ions are present that will give us an idea about the hardness of the water and these are estimated by treating with edta through complexometric titration whenever we treat with edta the metal ions form complex with the edta that is metal edta complex thereby helping us to find out the extent of hardness of the given water sample and this is the structure of the edta so ethyl edta means ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid ethylene ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid and actually edta means ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid there are four acidic groups there and but edta is an organic compound being an organic compound its solubility in water is less in order therefore in order to enhance the solubility while preparing the edta solution instead of taking edta as a standard edta as a compound to prepare the standard solution we use disodium salt of edta in disodium salt of edta in in original edta there are four replaceable hydrogen atoms out of four two are being replaced by sodium thereby we have disodium salt of edta disodium salt of edta being a salt is more soluble than edta therefore in the determination of hardness of any given water sample we use the standard solution of disodium salt of edta we don't use the standard solution of edta so in terms of reactivity both of them are same only thing is the solubility of disodium salt of edta is more than the plain edta or the normal edta that's the reason while preparing standard solution of this will help us in preparing standard solution of edta cleared no so now what happens is whenever we take so coming to the principle again so we take suppose let's take uh, we are taking 25 ml of the hard water sample hard water sample and uh, that hard water sample of 25 cm cube contains certain amount of metal ions calcium and magnesium ions that will be titrated against standard solution of disodium salt of edta taken in the burette so but the edta and the metal ions react effectively with each other at a ph of 10 therefore what we do we take the help of ammonia ammonium chloride buffer we take the help of ammonia ammonium chloride buffer this buff this buffer will maintain the ph of the reaction mixture at 10 throughout the occurrence of the reaction throughout the occurrence of the reaction so and to find to find out the end point we also take the help of the indicator so we take 25 ml of hard water in a given conical flask to that we add ammonia ammonium chloride buffer to maintain the ph at 10 then we add a small amount of very small amount of aerochrome black tea indicator we use this as an indicator this aerochrome black tea indicator the moment we add the indicator what this indicator will do this indicator reacts with some of the metal ions this aerochrome black tea indicator the moment we add into the hard water this indicator reacts with some of the metal ions what are those metal ions calcium and magnesium ions some of the metal ions forming metal ion indicator complex metal indicator complex so that's why you are going to get wine red color so i repeat once again we will take 25 ml of the hard water sample in a conical flask to that we add ammonia ammonium chloride buffer to maintain the ph at 10 after adding buffer we add a pinch of aerochrome black tea indicator aerochrome black tea indicator the moment we add it forms complex with some of the metal ions it interacts with some of the metal ions and forming metal ion edta comp sorry metal ion aerochrome black tea complex we call it as metal ebt complex the color of that complex is wine red if you take the aerochrome black tea indicator separately and you test its color by adding that indicator into pure water you are going to get blue color that means the color of the indicator in the free state is blue 
but when you add the same indicator into hard water you are getting wine red color that is this is because the indicator is forming a complex with the metal ion called as metal ebt complex the color of that complex is wine red so therefore whenever you take 25 ml of the hard water to that you are adding ammonia ammonium chloride buffer then you are adding a pinch of ferrochrome black tea indicator the moment you add the indicator you are going to get wine red color in the solid state it like, looks like having blackish color violetish color or purple color etc but actual color is what blue if you take the indicator add into pure water you are going to get blue color but you are adding the same indicator not into pure water here you are adding that indicator into hard water hard water contains metal ions indicator forms complex with complex with metal ions and the color of that complex is wine red therefore the moment you add indicator you are going to get wine red color then what you are doing after getting wine red color you are titrating that water sample of 25 ml what it contains 25 ml water sample hard water sample required amount of ammonia ammonium chloride buffer and a small amount of indicator you are added and that is wine red in color that wine red colored solution is titrated against standard solution of disodium salt of edta when you do so edta what it will do as all of us already know edta is a exorentate ligand therefore the moment you keep on adding edta into the conical flask containing this reaction mixture containing 25 ml of hard water the cdta being a ligand it starts reacting with free metal ions 25 ml of hard water contains huge number of calcium and magnesium ions huge number of metal ions out of huge number of metal ions a small amount of very small amount of the a fraction of the metal ions is engaged with indicator remaining metal ions are free in nature are still free therefore when you titrate the conical flask titrate the reaction mixture against edta edta reacts with free metal ions which are plenty in number forming metal edta complex forming metal edta complex therefore in the conical flask or in the reaction mixture now there are two complexes right one is metal ebt complex another one is metal edta complex there are two complexes present in the conical flask or in the reaction mixture out of these two complexes metal edta complex is more stable than metal indicator complex so out of these two complexes metal edta complex is more stable than metal indicator complex therefore what happens when you keep on adding edta into the reaction mixture from the burette edta in the beginning reacts with all the free metal ions all the free metal ions once all the free metal ions are over the next drop of next few drops of edta whatever you are going to add that will react with metal ions engaged with indicator and takes away this metal ions forming forming further metal edta complex and thereby indicator becomes free try to understand this you are adding indicator therefore edta there is a complex formed in the reaction mixture that is metal indicator complex color is wine red then you started adding edta edta is also a strong ligand and it forms complex with the free metal ions present in the reaction mixture there are plenty of metal ions are present so forming metal edta complex therefore in the reaction mixture there are two complexes one is metal edta complex other one is metal ebt complex out of these two complexes metal edta complex is stronger so therefore when you keep on adding edta from the burette into the conical flask edta reacts with all the free metal ions first forming metal edta complex then next few drops of edta whatever you are going to add those drops of edta that will react with metal ions engaged with the indicator because metal indicator complex is a weak complex being a weak complex metal ions prefer edta more than they prefer ebt therefore last few drops of edta whatever you add that edta will take away metal ions from ebt complex and forming metal edta complex and leaving indicator behind 
thereby indicator becomes free. What is the color of the free indicator or what is the color of the areochromatic indicator in the free state? That is blue. Therefore, once all the metal ions are engaged with EDTA, indicator becomes free and the color changes from wine red to blue. Color changes from wine red to blue. So, that is the point where all metal ions are reacted with EDTA. That is what the point we need, right? Because we want to find out how much of standard solution of EDTA is required to react with all the metal ions present in 25 ml of the hard water sample. So, here is the answer. So, once all the metal ions are engaged with EDTA during the titration, indicator becomes free. Color of the indicator in the free state is blue, therefore you are getting blue color. Therefore, during the titration, whenever wine red becomes blue, that is the end point. And that is the end point. That is how we find out the amount of EDTA required to react with 25 ml or whichever the known, anyway, known volume of the hard water sample. So, this is the principle behind the experiment we conduct to find out the hardness of the water sample. So, very simple, we use EDTA solution, disodium salt of EDTA we use because disodium salt of EDTA is more soluble than EDTA. Therefore, it is easy for us to prepare standard solution of disodium salt of EDTA and EDTA is a ligand. Therefore, it forms complex with metal ions. Therefore, this concept is, concept is very simple. Uh, depending upon the hardness of the water, number of metal ions are decided, right? More is the hardness, more metal ions are present in the given sample of the water. And less is the hardness, less number of metal ions will be present in given sample of water. So, when that required quantity of the water, known quantity of the water is titrated against EDTA, the water sample of the known amount will be consuming certain amount of EDTA. How much EDTA is consumed? It is depending upon the hardness of the water. More hardness, more metal ions, more EDTA will be consumed. Less hardness, less metal ions, less EDTA will be consumed. But to find out the end point of the titration, we take the help of the indicator and we also take the help of the buffer, buffer ammonia monoclonal buffer we take because at pH 10 indicator areochrome lacti works effectively. So, therefore, we maintain the pH at 10 by taking the help of ammonia, ammonia included buffer. Therefore, the concept is very simple. In a conical flask, we take 25 ml of the hard water. To that, we add required amount of ammonia, ammonia included buffer to maintain the pH at 10. Then, we add Ereochrome lactic indicator a small amount, indicator forms complex with some of the metal ions forming metal ion EDTA, metal ion indicator complex, metal ion EBT complex, the color of the complex, complex is wine red. Therefore, the moment you add indicator, you get wine red color and the wine red colored solution you are titrating against EDTA. The moment you start titration, what happens? EDTA forms complex with the remaining metal ions, remaining free metal ions forming metal ion EDTA complex. Therefore, there are two complexes in the reaction mixture, metal EDTA complex, metal indicator complex. Out of these two, metal EDTA complex is more stable. Therefore, once all the metal ions, free metal ions are engaged with EDTA, the next few drops of EDTA, whatever you add, that will form complex with the metal ions engaged with the indicator. Other way around, the next few drops of, last few drops of EDTA, whatever you are going to add, they take away, they take away metal ions from metal ion indi indicator complex leading to the formation of metal EDTA complex leaving indicator free and the color of the free indicator is blue. Therefore, you are going to get wine red to blue as the color change. That is the end point. There you will be knowing exactly how much of the standard solution of EDTA is required to react with all the metal ions present in 25 ml of the hard water sample if you have taken 25 ml or 30 ml of the hard water sample if you have taken 30 ml. So, this is the principle behind the experiment. Now, we will see how to do the experiment. Very simple, very simple. As we understood the principle already, conduction of the very simple is, conduction of the experiment is very simple. The first step is actually the preparation of standard solution of disodium salt of EDTA. What, where, uh, here it is not be, it is not required to be uh, written uh, in, you know, in, in when it comes to theory part, whereas in the uh, laboratory when you are doing this experiment, you are going to prepare the standard solution of EDTA. So, just uh, uh, revision of that. So, how to prepare the disodium salt of EDTA? We take known weight of disodium salt of EDTA, then we dissolve it, uh, we dissolve the disodium salt of EDTA by adding small amount of water 
to enhance the solubility of disodium salt of EDTA crystals, we add small amount of required small amount of ammonia. So then after dissolving the crystals completely, we make the solution up to the mark. Thereby, we make the solution up to the mark in a volumetric flask of 250 cm cube capacity or 100, 100 cm cube capacity or 50 cm cube capacity depending upon how much of the standard solution of disodium salt of EDTA required for us. Once we prepare the solution, standard solution of disodium salt of EDTA in that way, we calculate its normality. Calculate its normality or molarity. So, molarity of EDTA is going to be equal to weight of the EDTA crystals into 4 if you are preparing 250 cm cube into 10 if you are preparing 100 cm cube uh, EDTA solution divided by molecular mass of EDTA that is 372. In this way, the, the first step of the experiment you are preparing standard solution of disodium salt of EDTA and calculating its molarity. Then coming to the uh, titration, what we do? We pipette out 25 ml of hard water into a clean conical flask and we will be adding 5 ml of ammonia ammonium chloride buffer. So, we pipette out 25 ml of hard water into a clean conical flask. To that we will be adding 5 ml of ammonia ammonium chloride buffer to maintain the pH 10. Then to that we will be adding a pinch of ferrochrome lacti indicator. So, a small amount a pinch of ferrochrome lacti indicator we are going to add. The moment we add a pinch of ferrochrome lacti indicator what we are going to get as we already know we are going to get wine red color. That wine red colored solution will be titrated against standard EDTA solution till the color changes from wine red to blue. So, we understood how wine red is changes to blue, why wine red is changes to blue. Till wine red changes to blue, we titrate the reaction mixture against standard solution of EDTA taken in the burette. So, once the wine red is changed to blue, note down the end point, note down the end point. Let us say the volume of the EDTA solution consumed be V1 cm cube, V1 cm cube and anyway molarity of EDTA, let us take it as Z molar. So, in this way by conducting the experiment, we find out the volume of the EDTA consumed during the course of titration. Let us, we are calling it as V1 cm cube and we are also calculating molarity of the EDTA. Once we, know, once we know these two values, we can calculate hardness of the given water sample. So, what we do? We know that it is a standard establishment, standard relationship. 1 cm cube of 1 molar EDTA is equivalent to 1 millimole of calcium carbonate or 100 milligrams of calcium carbonate. That means what? 1 cm cube of 1 molar EDTA can interact with calcium ions, can, can react with calcium ions which are present in 100 milligrams of calcium carbonate. So, this relationship is being established. Okay. So, therefore, we take, uh, this relationship is being established that is 1 cm cube of 1 molar EDTA can interact with, can form complex with the number of calcium ions present in 100 milligrams of calcium carbonate. So, this relationship we are using therefore, we say 1 cm cube of 1 molar EDTA is equal to 100 into 10 to the power of minus 3 grams of calcium carbonate. If it is so, V1 cm cube because we have got the volume as V1, V1 cm cube of Z molar EDTA is equivalent to 100 into 10 to the power of minus 3 into V1 into Z gram of calcium carbonate. Let us, this is for how much? This is for 25 cm cube of the hard water sample. That means what? 1 cm cube of 1 molar EDTA is equivalent to this much of calcium carbonate. If it is so, V1 cm cube of Z molar EDTA can interact here in this experiment, in this titration experiment, whatever we are going to do or whatever we have done, we got the volume of V1 cm. That means what? V1 cm cube of Z molar EDTA is reacted, right? This reacted with how much of calcium carbonate? That will give you extent of hardness for 25 cm cube that is 100 into 10 to the power of minus 3 into V1 into Z gram of calcium carbonate. This much of calcium ions are present in 25 cm cube of the hard water sample. If it is so for 10 to the power of 6 cm cube how much is present? So, therefore, 10 to the power of 6 cm cube of hard water sample contains 
100 into 10 to the power of minus 3 into V1 into Z into 10 to the power of 6 by 25. For 25 cm cube, this much is the hardness. If it is so, for 10 to the power of 6 cm cube of water, what is the hardness? Therefore, total hardness of the water sample is equal to 10 to 100 into 10 to the power of minus 3 into V1 into Z into 10 power 6 by 25 ppm of calcium carbonate. This is how we are finding out hardness of total hardness of any given water sample. So, because we cannot find out here uh, one of 100 cm cube as uh, we in the case of COD we find out COD value for 100 cm cube. Whereas, if we try to find out the COD for 100 cm cube it is going to be too much less. It is it, it will be in terms of points that is the reason hardness we always find out in terms of ppm 10 to the power of 6 cm cube how much is the hardness. So, that we are calculating here. So, for 25 cm cube is this much if it is so for 10 to the power of 6 cm cube how much is the presence of calcium carbonate that is nothing but total hardness of the water sample 10 to 100 into V1 volume of the titration Z is the molarity. So, 100 milligrams into V1 into Z in 10 to the power of 6 by 25 ppm of calcium carbonate. This is how we find out the hardness of the given water sample. You may get a small doubt here that why do we express uh, the hardness in terms of ppm of calcium carbonate only? Why do not we express in terms of magnesium also? Because hardness is caused by both calcium and magnesium ions. So, the reason is very simple, it is a mathematical reason because the molecular mass of calcium carbonate is 100. So, therefore, calculation purpose it becomes easier. That is the only reason, that is the simple reason why we express uh, hardness in terms of ppm of calcium carbonate. Okay. So, once, so whatever the hardness we found out here, this is total hardness of the water sample. But water sample uh, at the same time uh, we can also try to find, we can also easily find out what is the total hardness, what is the permanent hardness and what is the temporary hardness. So, this can be found out by what we do, we have taken 25 ml of the water sample, right? to that we added ammonia ammonium chloride buffer and a pinch of indicator titrated against standard solution of EDTA found out the volume and using that volume we calculated total hardness of the water sample. Then what we do to find out the permanent hardness take the 25 ml of same water sample boil it for half an hour you take 25 ml of the same water sample boil it for half an hour and after boiling it filter it filter it take the filtrate and to that filtrate add 5 ml of ammonia ammonium chloride buffer and the pinch of ferrochrome black tea indicator you get wine red color as usual and titrate against same standard solution of EDTA same EDTA whatever we have used for finding out the total hardness again same EDTA you titrate till you get till the color is changed from wine red to blue I repeat once again suppose you have some water sample from that water sample you are taking 25 ml carrying out the experiment finding out total hardness then from the same water sample take another 25 ml of water sample boil it for half an hour after boiling it filter it collect the filtrate to that filtrate you add 5 ml of ammonia ammonium chloride buffer and a pinch of ferrochrome black tea indicator titrate against EDTA till the color changes from wine red to blue. This volume you take it as V2 cm cube this volume we take it as V2 cm cube and we know the molarity of EDTA already. So, we know permanent hardness of water sample is equal to 100 into 10 to the 4 of minus 3 is the same only V2 for total hardness whatever the titration reading we got we call it as V1 cm cube the same water sample boiling it for half an hour filtering it to the filtrate we added ammonia buffer and indicator did the titration whatever the titration reading we are getting we call it as V2 cm cube. So, substitute here calculate the hardness this is what is called as permanent hardness of the water sample. Why it is called as permanent hardness? Because 
we take the water sample boiling it for half an hour after boiling it for half an hour as all of you know bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium will be decomposed only chlorides and sulfates of calcium and magnesium will be left out in the filtrate that filtrate we are titrating against the sodium uh, disodium salt of EDTA solution thereby we are getting the result V2CM cube putting this V2CM cube here we are calculating the hardness therefore it is called as permanent hardness. So now you can understand that we have found out two hardnesses two hardness values one is first one is total hardness second one is permanent hardness and naturally total hardness is due to the is the combination of the hardness caused by bicarbonates, uh, sulfates and chlorides of calcium and magnesium. Whereas after boiling the uh, water for half an hour then we are finding out the hardness. This hardness is temporary permanent hardness. This is due to the hardness caused by only chlorides and sulfates of calcium and magnesium because upon boiling bicarbonates will be removed. Therefore, for any water sample when we find out total hardness value and permanent hardness value total hardness value is always be higher than permanent hardness value and total hardness value minus permanent hardness value if you do you are going to get what is called as temporary hardness therefore difference between the total and permanent hardness of water sample will give temporary hardness of the water sample. So in this way by conducting the experiment two times first using water without boiling 25 ml of the water to that ammonia ammonium chloride buffer then a pinch of ferrochrome black tea indicator getting wine red color titrate against EDTA getting the end point find out the volume consume volume of EDTA consumed using that calculate the hardness we call it as total hardness afterwards take 25 ml of same water sample boil it for half an hour once you boil it bicarbonates of calcium magnesium will be removed and filter it out filtrate to the filtrate add ammonia ammonium chloride buffer ammonium chloride buffer add a pinch of ferrochrome black tea indicator titrate against same EDTA you are getting the end point from wine red to blue note down the reading let us call it as V2 CM cube substitute the value of V2 in the formula calculate it you are going to get permanent hardness value permanent hardness value for any water sample generally will, will be less than total hardness value of the same water sample total hardness value minus permanent hardness value will give you temporary hardness value of the same water sample. In this way by conducting this experiment we can find out total hardness, uh, permanent hardness and temporary hardness of any given water sample. So now we will see, now we will see how to apply this concept in solving the problems on the hardness of the water sample very simple once we have understood what is hardness what is total hardness what is temporary hardness what is the difference and uh, which ions responsible for total hardness and permanent hardness and how to find out the total permanent and temporary hardness clearly then we can easily solve the problems on the hardness of the water sample that is we can easily find out the hardness of any water sample if the required data is given very simple. So here we go through a problem to understand that 25 cm cube of water sample when titrated requires 18.2 cm cube of 0 0.05 molar EDTA solution that is we are using 25 ml of the water sample titrating against 0 0.05 molar EDTA how much EDTA it's con it consumed 18.2 cm cube. So no heating here straight away experiment is being done by using buffer and dichrome lactate indicator so therefore the volume of EDTA consumed is 18.2 cm cube this is for this is we can generally call it as v1 cm cube this is for total hardness then another 25 cm cube of the same water sample was boiled about for 30 minutes and filtered into a conical flask the filtrate when titrated required 11.1 cm cube of 0 0.05 molar EDTA solution same EDTA solution 0 0.05 molar EDTA solution calculate the total permanent and temporary hardness of the water sample. Now itself we can understand 18.2 cm cube of EDTA is consumed in the first case same water sample then boiled for 30 minutes filtered 
and filtrate is titrated against stay immediately at this time only 11.1 cm cube is consumed. Therefore, 18.2 cm cube is for total hardness and 11.1 cm cube is for permanent hardness. Let us see how to solve it. See, we know the formula anyway, we know the relationship anyway, 1 cm cube of 1 molar EDTA is equivalent to 100 into 10 to the power of minus 3 grams of calcium carbonate. If it is so, first let us take, so before writing this, always remember, we have to write the data. What is the data given? Data given is what? Data given is the volume of the EDTA consumed before boiling the water sample is 18.2 cm cube. Molarity of EDTA is 0 0.05 molar. Molarity of EDTA is 0 0.05 molar. That is nothing but uh, 0 0.05 molar. And volume of the EDTA consumed after boiling the water for uh, 30 minutes is 11.1 cm cube. After noting down the data, write down this relationship 1 cm cube of 1 molar EDTA. We know that 1 cm cube of 1 molar EDTA is equal to or is equivalent to 100 into 10 to the 4 of minus 3 grams of calcium carbonate. If it is so, 18.2 cm cube of 0 0.05 molar EDTA is equal to 100 into 10 to the 4 of minus 3 into 18.2 into 0 0.05 grams of calcium carbonate. This is for how much of the hard water sample? This is for 25 cm cube of the hard water sample, right? Because for whenever we titrated 25 ml of hard water sample only, we got 18.2 cm cube of EDTA consumed. Therefore, whatever the amount of calcium carbonate present here, this is for 25 cm cube. If it is so, for 1000, for 10 to the power of 6 cm cube, how much? Therefore, 10 to the power of 6 cm cube of hard water sample contains 100 into 10 to the power of minus 3 into 18.2 into 0.05 into 10 power 6 by 25, you are going to get the answer as 3640 ppm of calcium carbonate. Therefore, total hardness of the water sample is 3640 ppm of calcium carbonate. This is total hardness. Why it is total hardness? Because it this is the titration done, conducted before boiling the water sample. 25 ml of water sample was directly titrated against EDTA by using, by, by, by taking the help of ammonia, ammonium chloride buffer and indicator. Therefore, it is always total hardness of the water sample. Now, coming to permanent hardness, permanent hardness here while solving, we can in, in, include this step for permanent hardness. Same we can write 1 cm cube of 1 molar EDTA is equal to this much of calcium carbonate. Therefore, 11.1 cm cube of 0 0.05 molar EDTA, you write here 10 to 10 to the 4 of minus 3 into 11.1 into 0 0.05, you are going to get some value. So, that you substitute here. Therefore, permanent hardness is equal to 100 into 10 to the 4 of minus 3 into 11.1 into 0 0.05 into 10 power of 6 by 25, you are going to get 2220 ppm of calcium carbonate. So, the point is, whichever the highest value you are getting, there is always total hardness, a lower value will always be either permanent or temporary hardness. Here, they are given the value of uh, the titration uh, uh, value uh, after boiling the water, therefore, that is corresponding to permanent hardness, you are getting 2220 and therefore, Temporary hardness of the water sample is always equal to total hardness minus permanent hardness of the water sample. That is equal to 3640 minus 2220. You are going to get 1420 ppm of calcium carbonate. 1420 ppm of calcium carbonate. This is the temporary hardness of the given water sample. So, this is how when any numerical problem is being asked on hardness of the water sample. So, EDTA molarity is same in both the cases and you just note down which is the higher value, which is the value of the, which is the titration value uh, before heating the water sample, which before boiling the water sample, which is the titration value after boiling the water sample. The titration value before boiling the water sample is corresponding to the total hardness. After boiling the water sample, whatever the titration value you are getting, that is corresponding to the permanent hardness. And use the formula, calculate total and permanent, total minus permanent will give you temporary hardness of the 
water sample. So, this is how dear students we can find out the hardness value of any given water sample. So, therefore, in this session we understood what do we mean by hardness of the water sample, what are the different types of hardnesses, temporary hardness, permanent hardness and total hardness and how to find out the hardness of any given water sample and we also gone through the numerical problem which can be asked on hardness of the water sample. So, therefore, at the end of this session uh, you will be having an idea about the hardness of water sample, uh, any water and what are all the problems we face out of the hard water sample, what are all the different kinds of kinds of hardness of the hardnesses and how to find out, how to determine the hardness of any given water sample based on that concept we uh, you also know how to solve problems whenever any problem is asked on the concept of water sample or uh, hardness of the water sample. Thank you.